Okay, so let's take a look at where the warp is now. I had put these two Lee sticks in between the cross. I still have everything tied. Have all of the loop tied here as well. And in this case, I'm going to be warping what we call back to front. So I'm going to be winding the warp onto the back beam. To give you that idea, I'm going to just turn this around a little bit so you can see what's going on here. And if you look up at this section, there are the chain, the two warps. Now, one thing that I realized that I did not do that would have been helpful, and I would I normally do it, is this is the section where I counted the one, two, three, four, five, and I grouped them. Well, I forgot to do it at the other end. It would make my life a lot easier if I had done that. Luckily, this is a very uh, narrow warp, and there is only eight ends per inch. By doing this, when you use the rattle on the back of the loom, they're already grouped into inches, which is what my rattle is set at. In this case, I need to do a little counting to make sure each uh, section is spread out. So that was one small forgetful thing that I did. And now we're going to go back and see what needs to be done next. I'm going to move the loom a little bit again so we can see what's happening in this direction. Now another thing that I add, uh, this time I have, these are my warping helpers. Some of you might just use uh, shoestrings. I used to use, basically that's what I did, I used shoelaces I should say. Some people have uh, angel wings that they use with the, uh, they put uh, in their warp. I've also seen the Harrisville has a little device that you can take your warp and go up and down. Some people also use uh, trapezes and other things. I found that this works for me. Now, there are two ways of tying on. You can tie it if your cord, you have a long enough cord all the way to the front and the back. The other thing some people do is basically, if you have a high castle, you can also loop it up here and you can wind your, the two sides or tie whatever you have up to this part. I've seen a lot of people who do what I just had it tied uh, with back this direction. So these are happen to be warping helpers, uh, another device that I discovered and started uh, creating them myself. So for this particular time, just to get set up, I'm going to start with winding the warp on with it all the way stretched out like that. I'm not quite ready yet. Another thing that I found that was helpful is I prefer to to tie or to slide my, to use metal rods rather than the wood. I just like the round part, especially when I'm tying things on. And they're less likely to bend. Not that all, not that all wood would bend, but it might. So the reason I did the ties here is because this loop, this particular rod needs to go in there. Again, I have one rod down here, but we put an extra one on. I'm gonna loosen that just a little bit. I see it needs a little bit more there we go. And I'm going to take the one end out. I like to keep this open so I can slide the warp back and forth. So bear with me for a moment. This is that lovely half hitch. So I'm going to take that in. And yes, like it normally does, it falls down. But I'm going to make sure that it stays where it's supposed to be. So now I have the rod uh, in between at the end there. So the next thing I have to do is I do the little loop around kind of hard to see. Uh, do a little loop and I'm going to put that in there to secure it. So now I have the warp ready, but I don't have the rattle. Now the rattle is a device that normally has, and you can make one at home with nails and a board, and I've actually, on one of my other looms, I've used a bungee cord to wrap it on, or you could use some C-clamps. The particular company that makes this loom has all sorts of ideas, pretty cool ones, and what they did is they make these little devices that slide right onto the loom that you can then pop your rattle right into. All right, now, now we need to 
get the rattle on. Well, we don't want it on top, we want it underneath. So, i got my rods out of the way here. And I am going to, so there's a little hole on the top of, drilled right into that end, slide it down. And we have the other one here. We put that in the other one. And now we have the rattle secure for this particular loom. And sometimes I like just to keep that rod right about there. I still have not taken any of the pantyhose ties out yet or whatever you might use to use the ties because I want to make sure everything's secure. Okay, at this particular time now, I'm going to take these ties out because the leaf sticks are securely fastened in there. So those are ready. And now I'm going to take this part off because what I'm what I'm going to be looking for is, remember the section where I did the, uh, the groups of five? That's what I'm going to look at to spread these out into the inch sections. So I'm ready now to take this off. We'll take the one off. And then we'll take the other one. And the other thing I want to do is I want to start to wind the, um, the rod down around it. So right now I'd like to spread them out a little bit, but not too much, just, just a little bit. Get some of this ready here. And I'm going to allow it just to dangle here a little bit, but I'm going to hold on to it because I do not want everything to slide out. So I'm going to take one, just so there's enough tension there to keep it in place. Okay, a little bit more. All right, we'll stop there for a moment. Make sure everything, nothing's caught on anything. There we go. All right, so now what we need to do is spread things out so they are even. In this particular rattle, this is the center. So it's kind of a little off center is what I like to say. It's going to be 10 inches. So this would be the center one. Well, I can go half and half, or I can just decide this is the, the center. So I'm, this is the way that I like to do it. Everyone has their own idea. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to allow it to come down a little bit farther. Bring it down a little bit more. Wind that on. Go ahead. All right, so now it's time to spread everything out. And like I said before, I group these into sections, eight ends in each group. So what I do now is I'm spreading them out and I'm gonna count over one, one, two, three, four, five. So we have one inch there. And now I'm going to the next one. Groups here, go to the next little group. And the next one. So we have five. Okay, that one was already spread in there. So I have five inches. But like I said, I forgot to count the other one. So I'm going to have to count. So since this is going to be eight ends per inch, two, four, six, eight. So that's going to go into the next one. And I can... They have an extra little slot nail in that one to send, to make it the center. Again, two, four, six, and eight. Two, four, six, and eight. Two, four, six, eight. And like I said, luckily, there's only eight ends per inch. It's a very narrow warp. So we have all of that ready to set up. And you also want to now spread things out on the rod underneath. Doesn't have to be perfect. It'll all start to wind on very nicely. And the other thing that I'll do is I'll go back over here and kind of stretch this a little bit. Also need to take out the thread that I put in for the grouping because it won't wind through. So right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm undoing the sections of inches. It's nice to have some yarn that's easy to take off. So we're going to start now with winding on. 
Now, depending on what kind of loom you have, this has a foot break. You do need to release the break and you start to wind it on. You just begin there. But one of the mistakes that very many beginner weavers do is they just keep on winding on. They forget that we do need to put some paper, cardboard. Some people use corrugated cardboard. Some use paper. It needs to be heavy enough. Brown paper might work. It's pretty heavy. Uh, and other kinds of things. But you do need to start to roll something in between there. If you do not do that, then there, the tension is all out of whack. It's going to be very, very different. So the next thing I need to do is I need to add some paper to keep all of the layers separate. All right, so these are two examples. We have the brown paper roll, and we have some corrugated cardboard. I often like to start at least with a little bit of corrugated cardboard to get started. So I'm going to start with that. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough to do the whole work, but we can add it on as needed. So I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to cover up those rods there. And again, I'm going to start winding the warp on. And it's important to keep the cardboard even. Okay, now I got uh, it ended up coming to where the ties are. So this is where you take your ties out. And some people might say, well, how are you sure you're getting the tension? You didn't add any uh, water jugs at one end. You don't have someone hanging on to make sure it's tight. Well, again, I learned this a long time ago at a weaving school called the Mannings. And this is the way I learned to do it way back in the 1990s. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of tuck it a little bit and then I'm going to come I'm going to wind a little bit more and I was always told that those sticks there are just enough weight and tension to keep it on to keep it going and you can see how it is and it looks like that cardboard is going to be enough all right so I just wound it up to where I need it and now I'm going to pause because the next stage will be threading the heddles <laughs> 